The first Dodge Challenger was seen in 1958 and had a two-year run. What many may not know was the Dodge Challenger had a lot of ups and downs before it became the muscle car it's known as today. After the Silver Challenger ended, it wasn't until 1970 that the first generation Dodge Challenger made its introduction. Based off the Chrysler E platform, while taking components from the Plymouth Barracuda, here's the complete history of the Dodge Challenger. First generation, the first car to actually have the Challenger name on it was a special edition of the 1959 Dodge Coronet named the Dodge Silver Challenger. It was a large two-door coupe that was only sold in silver. The name lapsed and Studebaker picked it up for an entry version of the Studebaker Lark series, sold until 1964. Meanwhile, the muscle car wars were heating up. The Mustang changed the automotive landscape forever, and the other American automakers had to scramble to come up with competing vehicles. Technically, Chrysler arrived with the Barracuda first, two weeks ahead of the Mustang, but it was Ford's pony car that started a craze. In 1967, Ford's Mercury division developed a longer version of the Mustang, which it called the Cougar. This led Dodge to develop a two-inch longer version of the Cuda, which is called Challenger, which debuted for the 1970 model year. 1970. When the Challenger arrived for 1970, Dodge offered it in numerous variations. The design of the 70 Challenger was based on an original prototype sketch for the Dodge Challenger, one that was to have a turbine engine. The turbine never happened, but it left designers with the inspiration for the Challenger. The base model was available with either an inline six or V8 and sold as either a coupe or convertible. The Challenger RT featured a 383 cubic inch V8 pushing out up to 335 horses. Then there was the range topping Challenger SE. The SE was available with such lavish options as a tape player, power windows, a rear defogger, and cruise control. A white 1970 Challenger RT 440 Magnum was featured in the 1971 film Vanishing Point. 1971. The Challenger Coupe, which was the new entry-level model, was added for 71. It had minimalist fixed position quarter windows, but was still available with either a 145 horsepower inline six or a V8 engine that made 230 horsepower. If you wanted more power, you could get an assortment of V8 engines, displacing 340, 383, 426, or a whopping 440 cubic inches or 7.2 liters. This year also saw the front grille go from the well-known recessed vent of the 70 to the equally recognizable split grille design. 1972, the 72 model year arguably saw the most changes in this generation of the Challenger. Dodge changed the grille to the egg crate design and extended the tail lights. It also removed the lavish options like leather seats, power windows, power seats, and a convertible top. Engine options for this year were also reduced to the 225 cubic inch slant inline six, a 318 cubic inch V8, and a 340 cubic inch V8. These engines were modified to run on unleaded gas. Toward the end of 1971, a few convertible models were built with the 72 front end and were used for the TV show, The Mod Squad. 1973 to 1974, these models largely featured the same front end, but with the addition of the five MPH bumpers, the six cylinder engine was dropped, leaving the two V8s as the engine options. For 1974, the 340 cubic inch V8 was dropped for a 360 cubic inch V8 that made 345 horsepower. After 1974, the Challenger was discontinued. Even within this short run, the Challenger made an incredible impact on the industry. It boasted features like the iconic shaker hood, which consisted of an air intake physically attached to the engine, protruding through the hood. It would vibrate with the engine, hence the name. Challenger X. For the 1978 model year, the Challenger name returned, albeit in a far less memorable vehicle. It was essentially a rebadged Mitsubishi Galant Lambda, a two-door hardtop coupe. This practice of importing a car and rebadging it for local appeal is called captive import. The 78 to 83 Challenger lacked the performance of its forebears, offering only a pair of four cylinder engines. The larger 2.6 liter Hemi engine featured balanced shafts to reduce vibrations. Mitsubishi was one of the first automakers to bring this tech to the North American production car market. 
Challenger production halted in 1983, and the model was replaced by the front-wheel drive Dodge Daytona, a modern muscle car. As early as 2002, Ford had shown concepts for its fifth-generation Mustang. Both Chevy and Dodge fired back at the 2006 Detroit Auto Show. The Challenger most closely followed its original ancestor in exterior design. The production Challenger arrived for the 2008 model year, with styling closely aping the 1970 Challenger RT. It rides on the LX platform, shared with the Dodge Charger and Chrysler 300. Daimler Chrysler ran things at Dodge until 2007, and so the Challenger, like many Chrysler vehicles of that time, has a front suspension related to that of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, and a rear suspension based on the five-link layout used in the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. Today's trims are the XST, RT, SRT392, RT Scat Pack, and SRT Hellcat. Engines offered include Chrysler's venerable Pentastar 3.6 liter V6 and a 5.7 liter Hemi V8. And yes, you can still get a shaker hood intake. Challenger Hellcat. In 2014, Dodge announced the Challenger Hellcat alongside the Charger Hellcat. Under the vented hood is a supercharged 6.2 liter V8, making an incredible 707 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. That's more power than a Lamborghini Aventador, Ferrari 488 GTB, or even the new Ford GT supercar. Official NHRA quarter mile times for the Hellcat are 11.2 seconds at 125 miles per hour on stock tires. It also features a performance suspension, brakes, and rear differential, all ensuring it can take a corner as well as it does a straight line. Despite being over a decade old, the current Dodge Challenger still manages to make headlines. As long as there is nostalgia for the olden days of American pony cars, there will be a place for the Challenger, in whatever form it takes in the years to come. Let us know if you're a fan of the Dodge Challenger, and thanks for watching Total Garage.